Today we're going to be learning about GoScan, which is a tool similar to Nmap, on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. GoScan is an interactive framework which can automate many unmapped tasks, such as doing a complete port scan of a local network. Because GoScan is an interactive framework, unlike most network scanners, it has some bonus functionalities, such as automatic tab completion or its own backend database, which can store many of the functions that have used previously. GoScan can be very useful for enumerating a network, which means it identifies all devices which are attached to the network, allowing you to create a plan of attack for how to perform a cyber attack on that network. Because GoScan is written in Google's Go language, you might have to install it onto your computer before you can get started following this tutorial. If you have any other problems with this tutorial, you can check out the article, which is linked in the description. Let's get started. So in order to even get started using GoScan, of course, we're going to have to download it onto our computer. To find the link to the repository so you can download it using wget, you can check out the article, which is linked in the description, and you can scroll down to this first example terminal window and just copy this wget command. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll open a terminal and a directory of your choosing. You paste that in, enter, give it a couple seconds. It's not too big of a file, uh, a couple megabytes or so. And then we will have a zipped version of GoScan on our computer. Um, to actually use this, we're gonna have to unzip it. And because it's just a .zip file, we can use the built-in unzip command. And now we have our executable. And we can make sure this is executable by using the built-in file command. And it tells us a bunch of stuff, but it does tell us that it is an executable file. Now we could run this executable in this directory or if we specify this directory every time, but to make our lives a little bit easier, we can go ahead and move it to our bin. So this will allow us to use it like a normal program. So you can just type it in, type in the name GoScan, no matter where you are, as long as it's in the terminal window. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to be a super user, but in order to use any of GoScan's uh, functionality, you are going to need admin privileges on your device because it does use advanced Nmap features. So, to, do, to move it to our bin so we can execute it anywhere, all you have to do is type in move, uh, go scan, oops, no caps, and then specify bin, and then we're gonna call where it's gonna be located, go scan. And I ignored my own device, of course, so we're gonna have to run it as sudo. And just a quick tip, these two exclamation marks, this just tells your computer to insert the previous command in place of these two exclamation marks. So this is really saying sudo, move, go scan, bin, yada, yada, yada. So that's just a quick trick there. And it's gonna ask for your password. And there you go. So now you can just type in go scan. And of course you'll need sudo. And there you go. We're now in the um, go scan interactive window. So now that you're in the go scan interactive shell, we can go ahead and start inputting commands. Of course, the first thing we're always gonna do is look for help. So if you just type in H, you can see that the um, tab completion um, suggestion comes up. So just because it typed an H, it realizes the only command that uh, starts with the H is help, and then it gives a brief description of that command. So I'm gonna just press tab to complete that. And it's gonna show the various utilities that um, are built into GoScan. And it's a bunch of different like Nmap tools and different network capabilities. So after you can, you can uh, look through the help, what help returns, we can actually load a target into the GoScan database, save it there, and we can actually uh, play around with it. So let's load a target. Um, I'm, in this case, I'm using a Metasploitable box, which is running on my local network. This just creates more interesting results. So to save a target on to GoScan, which can type in load, and then it's gonna recommend the three things that could come after that. So we're gonna uh, specify a target address, and we're specifying a single, tar a single target, and we're gonna type in the IP address of that target. So it's gonna be 192, 168-56-102 and it imported that target. So now let's do a ping sweep on this target. So to do that, you can just type in sweep ping. And then as you can see, it saved 192.168.56.102 to the database. So if you just press tab three times, you'll get it there. And it's also, you could also sweep all the targets you have saved, or you can just sweep the targets that haven't had a ping sweep yet. So because there's only one target, I'm just gonna specify that one. And it's gonna do two things. It's gonna show, it's gonna actually show the nmap command that it's using in case it's not working for whatever reason in GoScan, you can go ahead, open up a new terminal window, try it there. And it's also gonna print a um, 
some verbose response of what it's actually doing. So as you can see, because there's only one target, it didn't actually take that long and it's not that intensive of a uh, scan and it's going to tell you where it saved at. So we can go ahead, copy this directory and open a new terminal window. Because this is in the root folder, you are probably going to have to become a super user. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And hopefully put in my password in right. <coughs> and I'm going to paste in that directory and we're going to change directories there. So as you can see, it has the only folder in there currently is the name of the target that we were just analyzing. So let's change directories to 192. And it specified sweep. And now you can see we have results for the last sweep that we just did. Um, and they're saved in three different formats. Let's go take a look at the XML format. And as you can see, we got a lot of good information here. Let's turn, oops. Um, such as when the sweep was conducted, the IP, the MAC address, what kind of uh, response it was, and various information like that. Because this is only a ping sweep, this is just basically checking that that system exists. So we don't get too much interesting stuff there. So let's go ahead, exit out of that. Let's open our main terminal window with GoScan running, and let's go ahead and put in a different command. Let's actually do a port scan, which does much more interesting stuff than just a simple ping. So to do a port scan, you can type in port scan, port scan and then we're gonna do a TCP scan. So basically that's a transmission control protocol. Basically any port that two computers use to communicate with each other. So this could be port 22, which is SSH or secure shell, port 25, which is SMTP, which is used for email communication, port 80, which is usually for HTML and like um, forward facing websites, stuff like that. And the list goes on and on and on of all the different TCP scans that are used to communicate with each other. And obviously this is stuff you'd be interested in if you're scanning a network and um, wanna see what's on the network and how you can talk to it. So there's a few different kinds of uh, TCP scans. There's a full TCP scan, which will do basically every known TCP port. And then, but today we're just gonna do a standard TCP scan, which is gonna only scan the top 200 ports with TCP protocols. So we're gonna specify TCP hyphen standard, and then we're gonna scan again that last address. And it's gonna take a couple seconds because it's doing a pretty big scan. So that took a couple minutes just because it was scanning 200 different ports. But now that we have that done, we can go ahead and open up our terminal which is a super user, oops. And if we go back up and go back to the IP address we were using, now we can see that there's a new folder called port scan. So let's go ahead and navigate into there. And let's open up that XML file again. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, we have a whole um, lot more interesting information such as the different ports it scanned and the um, whether it was open or not. So basically open means, go ahead, you can try to connect to me. I may or may not have a password, but I am open for service. And you can see port 53 was filtered. Um, and that basically means it may or may not be open, just that device is not broadcasting whether or not it's open. So there's a whole lot of in interesting information you can go ahead and gain from this to understand what devices are on your network and what ports are available on those devices. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP ZAP, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Prep Course. Check out the link in the description below. As we just saw, GoScan can do many of the things that Nmap can, just much simpler and much more user-friendly. It's important to note that you should only use GoScan on networks that you have access to use. If you have any problems with this video, you can check out the article, which is linked in the description. If you have any ideas for a future video, hit me up at Twitter, at Nick Godshow. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.